Tina from the DIYMommy.com and today I want to share with you five steps to start selling your handmade items. So a few weeks ago I shared 10 different items that I think would be fantastic things to make and sell and there was lots of questions and so much interest that I thought I should make this follow-up video sort of diving into the beginnings of how to sell handmade items. Like I mentioned in the last video, I used to have a baby clothing and accessories business. So I'm gonna share with you some of the things that I learned when I was doing that. And hopefully if you wanna do a similar thing, you'll be able to use some of these tips and tricks for your own business. I wanna thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video today. Skillshare is a library of tons of videos that are going to help you start and establish and market your own business. So everything from branding ideas to marketing ideas to social media tips. They also have lots of great videos on how to do lots of different crafts and art like watercolors, sewing, interior design and everything. I love it for all of those reasons. It also has a very reasonable monthly fee so it's a great way to invest in your business. I'm gonna leave a link down in the description box below and in the comment section where you can get two free months of Skillshare. Test it out and see if it's right for you. So now let's get started on five steps on how to start your own handmade business. So you'll notice that most of these are research. I think research is very important. I don't think jumping into a business is something that's a good idea to do. I think it's really important to spend a lot of time, even years, to research your business before you jump into it. So step number one is researching your product. Make sure that you make your product safe for the consumer to buy. So depending on where you live, there might be some regulations on how you need to make your product, how you need to label your product, what sorts of ingredients you can put in your product, etc. So I was in the baby clothing and accessories business and there was actually a lot of different regulations in that because obviously selling things for babies to use is a very sensitive subject. If you're doing skincare, if you're doing food, um, a few other industries, make sure to check with your local government and see what sort of regulations you need to do as far as ingredients, as far as manufacturing, labeling, and even how you can market and how you aren't allowed to market your product. When you're researching your product, also check out how much it's going to cost you to make that product and make sure you're going to get a return on your investment. It might cost you a little bit too much to find the materials for your product and you won't be able to sell it at a price where you can get any sort of profit. So check out lots of different products that you could use, see if it's going to be right for you. And while you're checking out those products, do some research and see where you can find your materials. Are they easy to find? Are you going to have to pay lots for shipping? Are you going to be able to buy them in bulk? These are all great questions to find answers to as you're researching. Step number two for starting a handmade business is to research your competition. Try to find out how many people sell your specific product locally and how many people ballpark sell it online. I mean it's really impossible to figure out exactly the number of people that might sell your product online but a quick google search you should be able to see if your product is really popular if you're going to have a ton a ton of competition or if your product is very unique and you won't have as much competition therefore it might be easier or harder depending on what the product is to sell. When you're checking out your competition ask yourself how can I make my product stand out? If so and so is selling baby blankets how could I make my baby blankets slightly different in their design? Could I put a hood on them? Could I use really distinct fabrics? Questions like that. You can also look at what your competition is charging and decide if you can charge something that is going to be competitive with, with what they're charging and still make a profit for yourself. Step number three in starting a handmade business is researching your customer. So you can do this by deciding what type of customer might buy your product. What's their age group? What's their gender? Do they have children? Where do they live? Questions like that are really important in establishing your company. I think a big question to ask yourself, not only in handmade small business, but even in a job like mine where I am doing DIYs and sharing them on my blog and my YouTube channel, is asking what is my customer or what is my viewer's problem and how can I solve it? How can I be of benefit to somebody? And if you can solve a problem that lots of people have, that's a great position to be in and that means that your business will probably work. The fourth step is establishing your brand. I think branding is really important. I did have a graphic design and web design company at one point and I really loved creating brand images for people and for myself. I still love that too. And trying to figure out what is the consistent theme for my logo, colors, voice, fonts, and all of that. So establishing a brand I think is very important. That's gonna help you stick out in your customer and your potential customer's minds. So you need to first decide on a name. So make sure to check out the trademark registry in your country so you're not infringing on anybody's trademarks. Check out your local registry office I'm not sure if it's the same in other countries. Here in Canada, we have like a 
uh, provincial in Alberta. We have a provincial registries office where you can check out a bunch of names in your province so you're not infringing on their names. There's ways to check out uh, what names are available and what names aren't. So make sure to do that first before you think of a name. So after you establish your name, you're going to want to create some things like logos, like what fonts you're gonna use, colors you're going to use in your business. And you can do that yourself. There's lots of things like even words you can do that in or online programs where you can design those in but it's definitely a good idea to get a graphic designer or even somebody that's learning graphic design to do that for you so you can look very professional right from the start. Also check out social media. Make sure you grab your social media channels once you establish your brand. So get your Instagram URL, Facebook, YouTube, etc., and try to keep them all the same if you can. That's going to really help grow your brand. And then you're gonna to wanna to think of things like a website, business cards, brochures, signage, all of that stuff to help really let your brand shine when you're doing things like trade shows, when you're trying to sell things online, etc. And that leads us to the last step in starting your handmade business is simply to start selling. So after you've done all that research and put out that investment to get your brand started, now you can start selling your product. So you can check out lots of places like local craft fairs. You might have some local craft fairs in your area or another type of place that would sell something similar to your product. Uh, you can even do like consignment in sh local shops in your town. Check out the cost of those things. Decide if it's worth it for you, if you're still going to get a profit. Also check out uh, references if people have done that trade show or sold items in that shop. Ask around and see what their experience has been. You can also definitely sell online. That's a really great opportunity for us nowadays. We can have a huge audience because we can sell online. So places like Facebook, buy and sell you could begin with. Uh, up here in Canada we have Kijiji. In the States you have Craigslist. Places like that you can sell online. You can also sell online with your own website. So you could set up a website. I like using WordPress to set up my sites. And then you can use things like Shopify, that's like an online shopping cart program that works right with a WordPress site and sell like that. It's a little tricky to set up. You might need help with that. Uh, you might need to hire somebody to do that for you. Depends on your skill level. But the nice thing about selling from right directly from your own website is you're not gonna have to pay anybody any sort of commissions. You could also try selling on Etsy. It is a huge handmade marketplace. You've probably heard of it already. The thing is that they take some of your profit and there is a ton of competition there. There's so many amazing makers on there. However, there's a huge audience there as well. So if you have a very unique product and your branding is on point and established, that might be a great place for you to sell your product as well. So I hope those tips helped. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions at all about selling handmade. If you want me to continue this series, let me know. This is just kind of a taste of what I've learned when I was selling my own handmade products. Make sure to check out the link down in the description box below to get your two month free trial of Skillshare and that's gonna help you launch your business as well. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more DIY and decor ideas on a budget. And I'm gonna leave some more videos for you to watch right up here.